everybody, welcome back to Mr. and Mrs. Taper. Uh, good to have you here. Uh, today we wanted to talk about us leaving the church, the process from where we were like questioning all the way to us sending in our resignation. A lot has happened since May 2019 to now. We've had a lot of changes, a lot of experiences, a lot of growth. Back in May, my sister Ruth called me in the middle of the month and she told me that her husband, Sean, had told her that he looked into the history of the church and had read some things and done research and decided that he no longer wanted to be a part of the church. It came as a shock to me because Sean was such a true blue Mormon. Yeah, Sean was like a very strict Mormon. Very, very strict Mormon. Yeah. So it was a surprise. A couple days later, he sent out an email to his family and our family explaining why he no longer wanted to be part of the church anymore. His email was very eye-opening, but also pretty respectful. I was really shocked because at that time, I was very, very faithful Mormon. Uh, I was going to church every week. I was in the Young Men's program. Sean really was a true blue Mormon, super faithful. Uh, he had been the elders quorum president and then been the secretary. About a week after this, we decided we wanted to all go to the beach. Uh, we tried to do a yearly beach trip to somewhere in California. This time we went to Oceanside and we really had a blast. So we needed to go get a few groceries and uh, Sean and I were talking about alcohol and the wheel started turning in my head. I was like, I've always wanted to experiment with alcohol and, and try it and see what it's like. Uh, and so. I told Sean, like, hey, let's get a little something that's alcoholic and, and we can drink it together um, out on the back uh, porch of the Airbnb we're at. And Sean's like, are you sure? Like, Sam, that's not Mormon. And, and I was like, what? <laughs> and we were like, what are you do doing? <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, no, Sean, like, seriously, I've always wanted to experiment with it. It's not you being a bad influence. It's just... This is a good opportunity, it's a safe environment, and it'd be a good place for me to be able to experiment with things I'd never been able to do. And Sean was like, okay. So the first night we enjoyed a hard apple cider, kind of like Angry Orchards, but it was some off brand that I can't remember the name of. The second night we had pina coladas with Bacardi, and I still have the bottle from that experience. It was this bottle here, and uh, we used about half for the pina coladas and Sean and I enjoyed them and then we made some virgin ones for the ladies because they weren't drinking. Well Ruth was pregnant at the time yeah. and I had no desire to so. Exactly. We also had like Mike's hard lemonades at some point. can't remember the exact day. Sean's birthday we had Patron tequila shots. Yes, I bought him this bottle of Patron and we shared it and uh, we finished the whole bottle. Yeah. But we didn't just finish that whole bottle, and we didn't just do shots wrong. I thought I knew how to do shots, but... Uh, did you do them backwards? We did them backwards. It was like lime, then... You did the lime, then the tequila, but you're supposed, you're supposed to do, to do the, the tequila, tequila, and the, the lime, lime helped it go down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny. <laughs> we did it wrong. So you can laugh at us. And then... <laughs> Uh, very oh, inexperienced as Mormons. <laughs> uh, and then the Bacardi, we had half of this left, and we were like having so much fun, we were like, let's just do shots of the rum and finish up the rum. <laughs> it's our vacation. Oh gosh. So what you're about to see, I warn you, is video of us enjoying our time, our experience at Oceanside, California and Airbnb, getting nice wasted. Enjoy. Well, tequila is not horrible. It's uh, not yummy. What do you guys got? Did it burn your throat? Is that your laundry? Yeah, yeah. it did. That's smart. I need to do some laundry too. Yeah. Hi. Oh my no. gosh, will you just stop? What? We're not trying to be anyway. Okay, I'm gonna be real. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Why are you walking away? I'm trying to walk to you. Really walk without using the counter. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Best birthday ever. Best birthday ever. 
but I haven't worked out for a while. So thank you very many. I don't like doing push-ups when I'm drunk. It's a little exhausting. Oh my goodness. Look at his face. Are you okay? Oh my gosh. Yeah, those weren't the best memories. I remember being completely turned off by like them drinking and then Sam puking and I was like, how is this fun? I was just so... It was fun in the moment, but yeah. I was turned off from tequila for it, a while. Yeah, I just was like, this is not cool. And so I think it was the next day we were at the beach and Sam forgot to take his wallet out of his pocket and he went in the ocean with it. And when we got back to the Airbnb that night, he was looking through his wallet and he realized that his temple recommend was still in his wallet and it had got soaked and ruined. And so he was like, oh shoot. And I think I said- Now I'm gonna, now I'm going to have to get an interview yeah. to get a new one. Yeah, and I was like, Sam, <laughs> I won't just, be able to answer. <laughs> I was like, you just got drunk. You're gonna have to take time to repent for that before you can get new. <laughs> recommend and I was like giving him the hardest right. time and it was right. just it was comical. I never went for that interview by the way. Yeah, he ne never re went back. Another recommend. <laughs> but I, it, it's comical now looking back but in the moment I was like so annoyed. I lied for that recommend. He's like, have you been obeying the law of chastity? No. When does any guy ever obey the law of chastity? Well, that was the start of our dipping into not being Mormon. And so it was fun. Why yeah, can was. you not drink alcohol? I mean, I learned moderation very quickly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> About a month later, after the beach trip, we went to visit family in Las Vegas. And Sam decided to tell his brother and his wife about his dreaming experience on the beach trip. Yeah, I felt like it would help me relate to them and because they hadn't been very active Mormon for quite a while since yeah. their marriage. They, yeah, before their marriage and even after their marriage for a while, they weren't super Mormon. So he thought that he'd my, be safe to yeah, tell them that. Sister-in-law and my brother. Yeah, and he thought that it would be funny and that they would find it funny. And when he told them, they weren't like really judgmental. They were just like, yeah, like I don't miss drinking for those reasons and kind of said stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, his brother had told his dad, and I remember his excuse of saying something like, he felt prompted by the spirit that he needed to tell your dad for my what Sam had done. soul's salvation yeah, so, aid, I don't know. So Sam gets a call from his dad, and the conversation was, like, how would you describe it? It was very, like, I heard about this, Sam, and I wanted to talk to you about it. I'm concerned for you. Um, and then he, you know, guilt tripped basically. Like, you know, that's a very like serious thing that you are experimenting with, and it can lead to other even more serious uh, sins. And it was just really annoying. So we definitely felt judged, and after that, I realized that we couldn't trust them. Yeah. I knew from then on out that whatever we would tell them, you would get around to everyone else, and it has. There have been moments where you've told them stuff and it's gone around to the entire family and we knew it came from them because they were the only ones who know mm -hmm. or knew. It's consistent. <laughs> it is. So uh, that's just been something we've had to learn about them. After that, let me rephrase this. After, do you want to be drinking? <laughs> After. Oh gosh. Still drinking. <laughs> After that, Sam had been talking to Sean about all the things that Sean had read, researched, and he'll explain that a little. Basically, from the time we went on the beach trip to about March 2020, uh, we just spent a lot of time with Sean and Ruth, and we really started to see eye to eye on how history didn't line up. Um, Miriam and uh, Ruth, Sean's wife, started recognizing like, wow, there's, a lot that I didn't know. Yes. And uh, Sean really helped me in, in the beginning, seeing sources that I could look at and research. And after that, I just started doing a lot on my own. And we stopped going to church, surprise. <laughs> he started working Sundays and I got pregnant. I was really sick. 
and um, I didn't want to take the kids to church on my own it was while a good feeling excuse sick. To go less active. And it was nice having an extra day to relax, especially because the kids started school and I was working again. I needed that extra day to be able to get through the week. And so we just started like slowly hearing things, reading things here and there. I think Sam joined um, the ex Mormon Reddit, was getting a lot of information from that. But we got busy with work and kids, and I was pregnant. We were preparing for the baby. And this guy. <laughs> and so it took us a while until we actually did our own hard research into everything about church history and all that stuff. And so by the time we did, it was March of In this March, year. Uh, after March 11th, she had the baby, and then we had a lot of time at home. I did uh, paternity leave, and I was gone for about a month. Um, and then yep. COVID was starting, COVID-19, yeah. and the whole pandemic. And so then my I went back to work for maybe like two, three weeks um, after I was on my paternity leave. And they were offering a uh, voluntary leave of absence. And I was like, sweet. So with all this extra time that we had, we finally read the CS letter. We actually ordered the hard copies, two of them. So we got the hard copies of the CS letter. And... <laughs> oh gosh. It is true. <laughs> um, the most correct book of any other book on earth. Oh my gosh. So after we got the hard copies each night, we would put our kids to bed and then we'd read it together and we would just have these moments while we're reading it and we were like, we were never taught that. I didn't know this. I can't believe that happened. Like what the crap moments. It's just crazy. The Book of Abraham was crazy for me. Yeah. Like just how all that was made up. And how like science backs up the fact that everything in the Book of Mormon is not real. Like there's no archeological evidence and they tried for many, many years to find evidence, and they can't. Yeah, it was and just... it's all these things that are just put underneath the rug, and oh, don't talk about it, you know? Yeah, it was just... the church does. It was an eye-opening, for sure. We were just... I was mind-blown. Like, I couldn't think that that could possibly be true, but it was. Yep, and was the temple. Resources. The temple parallels with Freemasonry. Yeah, I just... We just slowly were able to come to realizations and let things go throughout it all. And I think a big one, though, was testimonies and spiritual witnesses. Um, so, like, they say you can pray to know the Book of Mormon is true, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, you'll know the truth of all things. And that became, it became a reality to me that every religion has a feeling that connects them to their religion of it being the one true religion and how many religions are out there that have that same method of confirmation and it was confirmation to me that it's just another church an organization that uses feeling to try to get a following to try to get people's money to try to cause some sort of influence yeah Yes, yeah, so we read the CS letter. We read a like, letter from my wife. Letter to my wife. Here's the screenshot of the landing page. We um, did the gospel topics, essays. Um, On the church's website. We listened to John DeLynn's, um interview with Tom Phillips about... Is it Phillips or Phillips? One of those. Um, about the second anointing. And that was... I had never heard about a second anointing before. I was like, what the crap? It was a crazy couple months. Uh, we were emotional. We like had ups and downs with extended family. We, Even with each other. It's yeah. like a faith crisis is no joke. And that experience takes you through a grieving process that's very real. Um, so you feel sad, you feel angry, you feel uh, betrayed, you feel uh, l lonely, you feel confused. You don't know what to do next. Like you don't know your life mission sometimes. Um, luckily for Miriam and I, I feel like our focus has always been each other and our, fam uh, our family, our kids, and that's kind of what we've been like. That's that's been anchoring us through all of this, 
And now we want to be able to talk to people in our community and be a part of that support. So around April, we uh, I emailed the bishop of our ward and gave him a whole word document full of my concerns, many of which I sourced from CES letter and letter to my wife. Just gave him a visual representation of my biggest concerns. And I said, when can we talk? Uh, we ended up doing a Zoom call because of COVID-19. And we expressed to him our desire to leave the church and that we didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Miriam was still a little bit on the fence. It took us like another month and a half-ish until I was like fully on board and like things had happened with extended family that kind of pushed me over and just even more research and looking into more things I was like I'm done. Sam finally like pushed it for us. He mm -hmm. figured I, out. I went to quitmormon.com. Yeah. I got the PDF and I accident I actually in Word uh, took out all the attorney stuff and I made it more friendly to people who want to go through their bishop to resign and it worked. So uh, I basically have it online. I'll put it in the uh, description. Um, it's a Dropbox link. You download it. You just basically e-sign it if you have uh, Adobe Acrobat or you could go to any um, site that allows you to sign. And then there's an open spot for the bishop um, to be the notary. So because he's an official uh, officer of the church, uh, they allow him to be that notary and uh, it's, it's sort of like that legalized way of doing it. Again, for some it might be harder, but it did work for us and within three weeks we were out. Yep, we got our letters in the mail. Here it is. That's Sam's envelope. We'll zoom in on this. I threw my envelope away, but my letter's in there. Yep, both of our letters. I don't know. Which one's whose? Let's see. Oh, this oh, is yours. yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, ready? Hold so, up yeah. yours. Boom. Records are removed. Officially, uh, on July 6th, both of us got yep. processed. And it says, are you ready? <laughs> Dear Samuel Harmon, per your request, your membership resignation from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been accepted and processed. Should you desire to become a member of the church in the future, the, the local bishop or branch president in your area will be happy to help you. Blah. No thank you. Sincerely, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The organization is telling me this, not a specific, not a specific person. person. And there's not even a signature on here. It just says, Confidential Records Department and an address in Salt Lake City, Utah. So that's it for our video this week. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, ring that bell icon if you want to get notified every time we upload. We upload weekly videos every Thursday. Uh, again, everything in the description as far as uh, links to whatever you need. But we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.